Hello Travelers, Boardman21 here, and today we're going to discuss the 8.1 preview, but we're going to discuss it with Lizard IRL. This isn't just going to be a rundown of the preview, it's going to be how we think it's going to be implemented, what we think we're going to see, what we'd like to see, what we wouldn't like to see, and we're basically just going to discuss all of the stuff coming and how we think that it's going to be implemented and impactful to the game and how optimistic and excited that we are for the stuff coming. All right, without further ado, let's go ahead and introduce Lizard. Hello. Exciting, <laughs> exciting stuff ahead of us. Oh yeah, today we're going to be discussing all of the happenings in the preview, all the new stuff that we got hints for, and to start it off, we're going to start with the patch preview 8.1 and just work our way down the whole forum list of things. So, starting with the highlights, we got the end game. Them bringing fresh content to the Mono with the Fate, it even had another update today with some of the specifics of some of the things that they'd be bringing. And Lizard, how do you feel about it? What was your first overall impression going into that? I'm pretty uh, critical when it comes to Mono with the Fate. Uh, I think uh, the blessing system is great. I think the bosses are great. All the quest stuff is great. Uh, but I do think that after you're done with that, it doesn't really add... It doesn't really feel like endgame. It feels kind of like it's campaign. You do your quest, you get your rewards, and after that, there's not really much point to do uh, monolith and, and i think uh i really hope this uh whatever they do with it which we can speculate on it's gonna kind of like make sure that uh it has content to do and to achieve like the current we have but it also i would like if it also brings other activities to do uh side activities to do that they might introduce or not and also would bring back the infinite kind of like potential of uh grinding that that the previous one had not necessarily with the, uh, which is like that the content scales infinitely, but that, that at least you have a goal like, oh, look, I can get a 200 streak and I'm going to get like really good items from it or something like that, right? Because the current system doesn't really want you to do that because you get kind of screwed But how the system kind of like wants you to do the boss. And if you do the boss, you get reset. And if you don't do the boss, you have to choose. You can't really choose what modifier you 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 take on and obviously some modifiers are if you're playing a crit build and the monsters get crit avoidance you re-roll and they get crit avoidance again well just crit right it doesn't matter how good you are or, so it's, yeah we're uh, we're definitely hoping the reward system is definitely more rewarding especially for being able to go yeah. deeper into it um speaking of which wanting the the new systems you pointed out in the picture that we have this new rebel looking blue icon what are you uh -huh. thinking that that could be related to uh, yeah, I don't, so I, 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 I always take these previews with a grain of caution, you know. 11-hour games is pretty good at showing us nothing and then showing us everything. Uh, these previews are always, uh, always get me more intrigued than give me answers. And I am guessing that this, you know, Sarno is pretty good at this, you know, uh, kind of like teasing us, making fun of us, you know. Uh, torturing us sometimes and now this could be one of his evil plants or it could be a genius easter egg who knows but uh in in, in this first picture of the the monolith uh, teaser that recently got uh, posted we definitely see that one of the islands on the top has this like kind of like monolith pyramid looking logo on like a smaller island than the rest and I would like to I would like to think that that is something that is not on the preview and it's not in the game yet. Now, what is that gonna be? I have no idea. Right? It could be it could be anything, but uh, but I really hope it's something special. Yeah, me too. Just just looking at it, the first time I saw it, I thought it was gonna be one of the empowering devices. But as we zoomed in, we saw that it looked nothing like a treasure chest like we currently have. It could be a different logo, a different icon for it. Um, however, it could be something that's completely tied into another system. We're just guessing. Maybe it could be tied into the Eternity Cache, where it's somewhere where you would leave your items and then go complete a, a connected timeline. And depending on how far you got, you got your more powerful items. What are, what are your yeah, thoughts you, on that? You you mentioned that it looks like it's gonna have like a lot of breaches just by the textures you can kind of see that it's gonna have at least three four even more breaches and i wonder if it's something like the eternity cachet what if you could 
leave an item in that kind of like hub area, right? On this logo thing, this pyramid. Like imagine it's like a like a like an altar or something like that. You leave an item there, and depending on how much uh, content you do in the attached uh, islands, it would fuel up kind of like uh, the altar. You know what I mean? So if, yeah. if you kill, if if this altar here is connected to the dragon's reign and the age of winter. If you defeat the bosses, right? Each boss is gonna add like a component or something. I, I we have no idea how the eternity cache is gonna work, right? But imagine if you could just basically create items from the, I don't know. It would be uh, the the possibilities are infinite, right? Imagine if like different uh, islands would be attached to different ingredients. It's like, oh, dude, I want to get like an armor and I want to give it a, a lot of like uh, HP or whatever. Oh, you're gonna go and we're gonna you're gonna go kill the boss that gives bonus HP or whatever, right? Like if it, it every every every, you know how every island has like blessings that you can get. It would be cool if every island also had kind of like a shopping list that you could. And obviously, it's gonna be RNG. I, I would assume it would be kind of like RNG to still keep the player wanting to try. But I don't know. I think I think I, I get excited just thinking about all they can do. Or maybe it could just be like as simple as oh, you kill monsters on the timeline, and from time to time you go to the cache and hey, you filled up your altar and you get some badass item you know I don't know. Uh, yeah yeah it's definitely going to be interesting that's one of the first things i'm going to run to to try and figure out what it is and hopefully it's not something that's just uh, a portal or something that's just you yeah, know hopefully it's not just like a quick travel or something like uh, disappointing yeah also we have uh five new arena maps coming how excited are you for these and how do you think there'll be any different mechanics with these new maps coming in yeah I would say, I remember, I heard Jot and talk about how they wanted to kind of like touch a bit of Arena and explore Arena. And it seems like they want to explore stuff like, for example, what the Rustlands have, right? You know, it has like the traps and how Rustlands, because of the geometry and how the position of the spawn points are and how the traps kind of like limit how you play and so on. So I, I, I what I would like to see and what I'm expecting is I'm expecting smaller maps uh kind of like more action packed because obviously the wider maps a lot of people say arena can be boring or whatever and i think sometimes it's, it might be because some of the maps allow you to play really passively and really safely and therefore if you're playing like a really a strong character with versus very low difficulty and the map is also allows you to like just camp in a corner well obviously like a lot of people who are not familiar with the game mode they might think oh that's a first encounter maybe oh this does this is not that exciting i'm just kidding you know they don't get to get to the point where it gets exciting right so i'm expecting uh smaller maps maybe with some like um you know like for example something like uh what abomination has you know when you kill the the little like uh power plants or whatever like you you know the, the soul area, barriers the, yeah the soul barriers like the the area gets smaller so um basically you're you're forced to fight in a tighter area and you can you can't just like run around in circles forever kiting with some like range build or blade dancer or whatever so i i really hope that the maps are uh designed thinking that melee and range both can uh, shine in different maps because right now range like is like a huge advantage in arena just because you know you can take advantage of the ramps of the ledges and all that and it's cool, right? But obviously, you also want to have maps where, oh, in this map, range actually has a disadvantage and melee has an advantage for whatever reason, right? At least, like, spice things up so it's not just like, oh, uh, well, you're always better off no matter what with the range, right? Yeah. So I'm excited. I mean, I'm definitely going to learn them. Um, uh, I hope, uh, obviously, as there are going to be new maps, I hope the optimization is going to be great on them, I would assume, since they're new content. So all the new stuff seems to work better, so... Uh, it's exciting. I'm I'm wondering if uh, these maps are gonna be added to the current maps. Is the old maps are gonna get like touched? Um, if they're gonna, f like I don't know. I don't know what they're gonna do. And uh, I don't know. I'm excited. That's for sure. Yeah, definitely excited for the patch notes to make sure and see all the changes. I'm I'm hoping they come with some new mechanics, some more traps, some more environmental mm -hmm. things. Um, I'd also be super excited. You now have uh -huh. boss fights every now and then. I think a lot of people ask about bosses in in uh, in arena, and I think it's like I, I I think it's dangerous, right? Because some people that they just want to kill monsters, right? And 
arena i think what i like for example about arena is kind of like the rush feeling of like going from spawn to spawn and boom 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 bam 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 right and it gives you that momentum and i think like adding bosses might kind of like turn arena into something else and obviously you're gonna have to make your builds thinking oh my build got a big good in arena and also it's gonna i gotta beat this boss at wave x right so i think it would limit uh, like the builds that are viable because you gotta be good at everything basically and obviously there's not that many builds that are good at everything um and again I think once the game is once the game is done, there should be content for everyone. Some people like bossing, some people hate bossing. Some people uh, want to do both. Some people don't want to boss ever because they just want to, you know, it is what it is. Like in Diablo 2, you have people who just kill Mephisto over and over, and then you have people who are like, ah, oh, I don't, I don't want to see Mephisto. I'm just gonna kill cows, right? So um, hopefully, um, uh, hopefully, uh. uh there's game modes that appeal to different people, so we don't have to change current game modes to fit more people because those people are gonna have, they're gonna find the content they want somewhere else. And that, that's what I would like to see. But uh, I don't know. It's uh, we'll see what they do. <laughs> you know, yeah, you know? I'm a cow person, by the way. Speaking of which, just quickly, are you excited for that Diablo 2 remaster that that's been announced? It's not announced. Well, like, officially, not right? officially it's announced, but it's pretty. Yeah. It's got some steam. This is this is the thing with Diablo 2 remaster. I've I it's been announced and confirmed T since 2015, right? So at this point, right, I'm like a kid who already knows like Santa is not real, right? And I mean if Santa comes it's gonna be great, but I'm ex you know, like yeah, like uh right. This is the year guys. Last year, uh this this is the leak, boys. So if it happens, it's going to be great, but because uh, I think it's a great game, especially a lot of people haven't experienced the game since it's old and blah, 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 right? So I think just like, so more people can experience, in my opinion, what a true RPG is. Uh, uh, it's funny that you, you we talk about this now, right? We always I always end up talking about the other because a lot of people think about, oh, but... You know, RPGs are all about end game and going fast and blah, blah, blah. And obviously they're talking about modern RPGs, but RPGs were not that at all, right? Like, uh, like for example, if you talk about Diablo 2, Diablo 2 has no end game. Like, all you do is the campaign over and over, and people have been doing the campaign for 20 years, right? The only end, end game is what cows? Like, everything else is just a campaign and Ubers, I guess, right? And uh, the, the people, the reason people play the game it's not because the end game it's because the items people play diablo because they want to play 100 hours 200 hours because they want to get that juicy ass item that when they put it on they feel like oh my god look at this item look at the look at my titans look at my you know like uh, whatever you find you know and i think this is one of the things that right now we're lacking actually in last epoch we have i would say the gameplay is really fun i love playing last epoch but the items are just like, well, uh, I'm just going to sit on the gambler, talk to Artem, right? And, yeah. Man. Uh, and then what? <laughs> well, speaking of items, there is a lot yeah, of changes can't... coming to them. So uh, okay. I guess what we'll just go. Uh, what can I say? Great. <laughs> yeah, we'll, we'll great start with the top of the there. top of the list and work our way down. Uh, the first one, they're introducing those new powerful skill fixes that we saw where you can get additional levels to either element types, either three uniques, or maybe it'll even be craftable, or you'll get specific levels to specific skills. Um, what do you? What's, what's the first skill? Are you going Vengeance right off the bat with that? Or you got something else in mind? Uh, the thing that I thought the first, personally, it was Fireball for me. Because Fireball is a tree that I like Fireball, but Fireball needs 20 points. Because you know you need the pierce, you need the the flame burst, you need the this, you need that, and basically you can't really move many points here and there, and you kind of like need a catalyst because you don't can't, you can't really afford the base crit. So dude, I'm just imagining if I can get plus three, plus four, plus five to fireball, and I can get all the juicy other stuff, dude, that skill is gonna be sick. There's, for example, when I think about vengeance, like well, what am I gonna do if I get plus five to vengeance? I mean, I already got all the good shit. Uh, I mean, sure, I can go, you know, get a bit of attack speed here, get like a bit of shred there, but it's not, it's not gonna be like, wow, this uh, this skill suddenly went next level, right? Or for example, if you think about meteor, right? Like, 
Well, Meteor is already a pretty good skill, right? Uh, if, if you went from Meteor 20 to 22, what are you going to get? Like A little bit more damage. But yeah. uh, for Vengeance, you uh, what are those blades you get on hit? The, you know the name yeah, of them? Uh, yeah, yeah. E exactly. <laughs> but yeah. now that you have those points, you might actually try something with them. <laughs> well, uh, I did. When I did Ignite, because they count as hits, right? But... Uh, with Pali, but uh, yeah, it, when I, yeah, I can't really play that anymore because the PC explodes. So go go back to uh, Fireball for you for just one second. Yeah. Um, what what are you gonna do if you can get plus five to that? But they also said that they're reworking or revisiting all skills. And what are you gonna do if they have changed the pathways and the balance of that skill to where the new twenty five is the old twenty? Well, I'm gonna be pissed. <laughs> 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 I'm gonna make a YouTube video about it. I'm gonna make a forum post. It's gonna be oh you you they don't want to see me angry. Uh, no, hopefully, hopefully not. Right? Uh, yeah, I don't expect Fireball to change too much if they if yeah. they do update that. But I, I just think uh, it would be so cool to just get some of the other stuff that you are not able to experiment that much. You know, because well, you kind of like need the base points to make it work, right? Um, but yeah, it would be sick just, uh, you know, getting all the, like, just just being able to, uh, like, get the flat crit, so you can you can just run a stuff, and you don't need a catalyst, and suddenly fireball, instead of running, like, 60 flat damage, you're going to be running, like, 120 or something, you know, with, uh, it's going to be sick, so, you're, you're, you're going to do so much more damage, just because you can, uh, you, you, you can still go crit and go stuff, so. Yeah, it's been a big discussion of, uh of late on the forums about having uh being able to get to 100 percent crit too easy and like i've always wondered why they haven't put a base crit on a two-handed staff and it's because of course they don't want you to call yeah. it a best in slot and and be able to get to 100 percent crit and then the rogue came in and rogue is based around 100 percent crit on just about every version of it um, i don't like that either i don't like that 100 percent crit is given to players for free i think 100 percent crit is something that uh is uh desirable right like if you're if you're like a lot of people say oh last people doesn't have desirable items well getting 100 percent crit if you're doing a crit build is definitely fucking desirable right so uh for example i don't i don't like that for example if i if i play like rogue uh, i don't even need gear like my dude's already like has 100 percent crit without items i'm already doing a shit ton of damage without items like what why would i even grind this like i'm already doing more so obviously it's a bit overtuned and i think I think it's obviously a bit of the class identity, right? That this character is more uh, prone to crit since he's an assassin and blah, blah, right? Makes sense. But it should at least, like, uh, maybe it should be rebuilt more on, like, the way he gears and the way his idols work. So he is still going to have that identity, but it's just not going to be given to the players for free. Because uh, I, I, I think you always got to have room for... Um, upgrading a character. If you have a character that's level 70 and you have 100% crit and your character at level 100, still gonna have 100 crit and the only thing you can get a bit better is like, well, I'm just gonna get a bit of dodge here or a bit of more crit multi or whatever, which you don't even need because you already have fucking, you know, like <laughs> 900,000 on that character. It just feels like, well, like it's an action RPG. At the end of the day, these games are about grinding. And the game, action RPGs are about items, and I'm not the one saying it. David Brevik said it, who's the inventor of the genre, right? And um, I think Last Temple gives too much power without items already. Like, there's obviously all the multiplicative notes on uh, on uh, on skills. I think they're too much. Like, if you know, like you have a skills and you get a grapple. This is how you level a skill. You you open the tree, you type more, and you grab all of them, right? Well, that's and, what I well, do, yeah. Yeah, exactly. Everyone that plays properly, right? So, and, and I think it's a shame, right? Because basically, you can all of the all of your damage is basically coming from from that. And if you go to the shop, right, and you just gamble a gray weapon that has like a level whatever, you're level seventy, you buy a level seventy weapon, you put it on, and you have all of your multipliers. There is not much room for you to in, uh, improve, like your stuff because you know most of your damage is just coming from those i mean you can get idols which are basically the only like real chase item that we have at the moment but for example i love that idols are powerful for example vengeance idols apparently vengeance idols are bugged right because they're multiplicative right yeah 
Well, and I... so basically, basically it means that without idols, vengeance is is hitting for like two thousand, and once you get your four idols, you're hitting for eighty thousand, right? And obviously, this feels really good because you're a new player, right? And let's just say your vengeance is is hitting for like eight thousand, right? You know, you don't have idols here. It's a new character, and then oh, you're playing monolith. Boom, you drop an idol. Ah, it's only a twenty-five percent. Yeah, it's only 25%, but you feel, instead of critting for 8,000, you put on the idol, bloop, now you're critting for 12, right? It feels good. And not only that, but you don't want a 20, you want a 50. Because you, you're not going to crit for 12, you're going to crit for 20. And you don't want one, you want four, right? And those idols give you that rush, like when you drop an idol, it's one of those only things that I think I get adrenaline from in Last Tip, because everything else I just get for free, pretty much. And, or I can just gamble for it. Right? And I, when you drop a good idol, they're hard items, they're chase items, they're items that you have to go and find. And therefore, they should be powerful. Like I hate, for example, on the rogue, you don't even you don't even need idols. Like, you can, like you, you're gonna one shot everything. You don't need idols, right? And um, I think they should take power out of the base abilities and add power into idols, weapons, and gear. Like uh, uh, th just because it's an action RPG. Yeah, I'd like to see that. Especially that the chase of idols was especially fun when it first began, um, and then again with the rogue. You know, finding new ones are always fun, but yeah. when you don't really need them, it's not as interesting. You know, you're not you're not going out specifically just to find them. But yeah, I agree. I I definitely like idols that have more modifiers on them. I like the ones yeah. that do damage versus. Um, something that uh, just changes. I, I like the element type changes too. You know, like going void with, yeah, with cool. a, yeah. a type. But at the same time, you know, um, I, I don't like the ones that give you some sort of damage that does nothing to do with like what you want to do. Like uh, yeah. I know that for. Uh, hammer throw on the paladin you can get added lightning damage which is okay but like it would be way cooler if it converted hammer throw to a lightning and all added damage was lightning yeah, or something yeah. that was like more useful it, it seems to me like obviously hammer throw is like an older ability and it seems to me like the damage conversion thing is gonna be like a more prevalent thing in the future and I'm basing this based on basically new skills for example something like the donating arrow right it's a lining ability, and you go to the tooltip, boom. All added damage converted to lining. Mwah, so good. I think they need to do this kind of stuff for so much stuff. For so much abilities. Like, For example, mages don't have that problem. Why? Because adaptive spell damage already does that for you. right? Which is kind of like dumbed down, obviously. right? Uh, I, I think it's cool to have like... Oh look, I'm gonna, you know, I'm gonna have fireball. I have this weapon that is giving me void flat damage, right? And I'm gonna turn my uh, my fireball into void, and I'm gonna use this. And I think that's more interesting than just like, oh well, everything just converts, right? Um, but at the same time, I think giving the players um, control on what source of damage they're gonna do, or some control. Obviously, you're not gonna be able to change to whatever you want, because then what's the point of choosing a skill, right? But, uh, for example, I'm, we were talking about Vengeance, right? For example, yep. I choose Vengeance, right? And it's like, well, I'm playing Void Knight, and I'm getting all of this amazing, like, in Void increases and, right, like, in Void flat damage and all that. And it's like, well, now what, the, what do I build on my gear now? Do I go physical? Do I go Void? Because, you know, like, no matter what I built on my gear, half you go of right. my damage... Yeah, yeah, half of my damage is not scaling from it, right? So... I really hope they give us more tools to uh, control what our damage source is. Obviously, that makes sense thematically, right? Uh, I'm curious if that'll come with a lot of these revisited skills that they're doing. If assume. if a lot of them will change to damages being added to whatever element type it is, so that all damages yeah. will be kind of the same. You know, things like Elemental Nova probably won't see something like that because, you know, they're meant to be... You can kind of already do that inside the tree, canceling out the other ones and such. But uh, there's a lot of skills that I would definitely like. Like, uh, I would really like, like, Tempest Strike to be able to pick one of the three if you, you know, if you disable the other two, I would like it to scale off of just one damage type yeah, versus yeah. still scaling off of all of them. Other, other, otherwise, doing that, you're basically screwing yourself, and it feels like... 
well, what am I getting punished for choosing like what I want to play? It feels a bit weird, right? Yeah, and, and Primal Street has a lot of those where you can add cold, you can add lightning, I think you can add yeah. physical damage, but when you get to a skill, it doesn't convert them, so you have all these random ones that are on different timers, and it just kind of feels clunky, but yeah. That is, that is another thing that I like about... Um, about uh for example how they made the for example the marksman I, I think the rogue is absolutely overpowered it almost feels to me like it's so overpowered it kind of like no offense but it just feels like did anyone actually fucking test this because it's so broken right like so broken like like legit obviously I'm, I'm not claiming anyone i'm just saying that i just think it's really ridiculous when you have like full geared like sentinels and full geared mages creating for like you know, like 100k or whatever on the dummy. We're talking GG characters, a thousand hours on the character, right? Like, best in slot shit. And then you just grab this character who's level 60 and it's doing more damage than you. It's just like, and by the way, it's tankier and faster. And, you know, it's just like, uh, we gotta be careful. It's beta already. We, we need to be careful with the power group already, you know? And, uh, not only that, it's just like, it's just, I, it just feels like there's no, when you're so OP by default, and the content available in the game is only so much. Uh, obviously, there's no room. Like, why? Why would you grind for gear on an RPG if you don't need it to be powerful? Yep. So as simple as that. You should need gear. And this is another topic that I want to talk about since we were talking actually about gear. Like, they obviously, you, you guys know, uh, if you read the forums, you've seen me. I, I'm not a big fan of the new system, right? I understand it's more like beginner friendly, blah, blah, all that. I get it, great, but it, it's very, very simple. And compared to the other one, it's really boring for someone like me who wants to take the game serious, right? And they always, uh, I always hear this thing by the, by the devs, right? Uh, they say, well, the new system is less punishing because, you know, if you're not capped on protections or whatever, it doesn't feel as bad, right? Like uh, every percentage of protection is worth the same. So if you're at 60 instead of 75, it doesn't feel as bad. Yeah, it doesn't feel as bad, but when you're at 75, it also doesn't feel as good. If you make something less punishing, it's automatically, by design, less rewarding. So now we have a system that is not punishing at all, because you don't need items, but it's also not rewarding. <laughs> and I rather, like, the reason caps work, it's because people feel them, right? Like, oh shit, I'm getting one shot by this ice guy. Guess what? I got my cold protection. Now I'm immortal. Fuck you, right? It literally works on, like, uh, this, like, mentality of, like, oh yeah, but it's too punishing. Like, I feel so constrained. I have to cap up my, I have to cap up my resistances. Yeah, of course, you want to do it, you want to be powerful. Like, what's what's the problem here? Like, uh, I don't see the problem, I think, uh, I don't know. Like, I'd rather have, if my gear sucks, I should suck. And if my gear gets good, I should be a god, right? And that's why I'm going to go off my, you know, I'm going to stop spending time with my family, and I'm going to go play a video game, right? Um, and obviously, I'm not, I'm not saying that the game suddenly should be hardcore and should, like, one-shot you if you don't have protections. I'm not saying that. What I'm saying is that you gotta be careful with making these design choices and these philosophy choices. Oh, we don't want to punish uh, players, but we don't want to feel like they ha mandatory need to. Ch we're designing systems that they're not punishing, so you don't have to follow them. But we're designing them. It's like, well, if you're designing systems that people are meant to ignore because they're not punishing, why the fuck are you making them, right? Make a system that you feel confident, make players grind for it, and when they achieve it, they'll feel good about it and they will keep playing the game, right? That's what I think, but uh, so again, uh, I understand that uh, you know the, the game can go big and they want to be appealing to casuals and people who maybe they just want to have a chill time. I get it, right? But it's really important that the system provides a good baseline that what it has right now, but it needs to make sure that it's also appealing for the people who don't want to play ten hours a week, the people who want to play a thousand a month, right? Or, or, you know, every year or whatever. You know what I'm saying. Yep. Um, and right now we don't have that, right? Like I can I can gear up a character in two days and it's done. And uh, and the, the the character is doing the same scores in the arena that uh, my 2,000 hour character is doing. And uh, obviously it doesn't feel that good, right? Because I just feel it's feel like, well, why the fuck would I play 2,000 hours if I don't get anywhere else? Like because I'm just getting <laughs> my gear. Yeah. Useless. 
Yeah, and uh, and speaking of that uh, resistance caps, and speaking of being able to gear your character, how do you think the new changes to defense? Now, it doesn't specifically say in the patch preview that they're actually going to implement these in 8.1. It just says that they're working on them. So whether they're coming or not is still kind of up for debate. But <laughs> but if they do come, what what kind of defense changes do you think that they're they're looking at changing? Uh, and that probably ties into the the relic being class specific having less slots um they're also changing yeah. prefix suffix my, around my, my, my relic right now is basically a defense board so um okay things i'm expecting i think the current system is not bad for beginners i think it's actually when you make a new character to, I, I was joking about how can i gear a character on two days those two days are fun the problem is after those two days i have nothing else to do so I think is they can keep like the base gearing how it kind of like how it is you know like uh, people seem to enjoy it you know people have fun capping their resistance and new players found it challenging but not overwhelming it's like a good balance I think like at least from what I've seen of new players but then you got a big you you gotta bring the big big stuff for for the big boys right like okay what if for example if you get like a tier six or a tier something or uh, make affixes that are more powerful and better. For example, imagine you're building elemental resistance, right? On your suffix and a tier, a tier, a tier, a tier five is giving you like uh, 25 or whatever. Yeah. Well, what if you could have something, right? That is like elemental resistance, like, um, but like a 2.0, right? And it gives you the 20% down, 25% uh, resistances that the, like the common one does. But it also gives you 10% uh, damage absorption of that, that type, like they do in Diablo 2. I, I think they just gotta bring... It, it's very simple. If I have a character that is 60 hours, and a character that is 6,000 hours, the character who's 6,000 hours should take less damage than the one who is 60 hours. How do you do that? Well, you gotta give the guy who spends 6,000 6, hours... But well, I'm just using this number as an exaggeration, right? something that provides that right how do they do it in diablo 2 because every character in i was thinking about this right i was thinking how do they do it in diablo 2 because i was thinking every character in diablo 2 has the same cap of resistances except paladin but you know everyone caps at uh at uh, 75 or whatever and that's it right like in last epoch how do they do it they do it with damage absorption like suddenly you equip these gloves right like and suddenly like oh you have 20 percent cold absorption so if you get hit by a hit that hits for 100, it's not 100 anymore, it's 80. Boom. That's after all your other resistances, right? So I, I really hope they bring stuff that makes your character feel stronger uh, that you actually have to go and find. Because uh, uh, this is not a complaint about, oh, we're too squishy. And, uh, I, I don't want my characters to be stronger because the depths are just going to go and change a passive. Oh, instead of 10% damage reduction, it's now 30 that doesn't solve the problem because if it's on a passive the 60 hour guys and the 6000 hour guys both get it it needs to be attached to prog to to progression and not to character identity right it's got to be something that i have to go and fight for otherwise i'm not going to play <laughs> like i'm going to i'm not going to play for a fucking 50 more hp after 2000 hours of grinding you know? yeah and so what's your thoughts on the uh you'd rather see like global damage reduction in passives instead of being everyone able to get it being able to get elemental types or be able to get certain types on gear instead and be able to find those items and and yeah. grind for them i think it's important that they bring some sort of tankiness uh especially for those who want it that's the thing if you make the tankiness a gear choice oh you're gonna make you know uh, you're gonna make characters some characters are gonna go for it right and you're gonna oh look I, like i'm playing sentinel i'm going melee range i really need these fire absorptions because i'm getting fucking blast by this guy right but if you're playing a sword it's like fuck that man just give me damage right like i'm not getting hit anyway right uh why, why would i want damage absorption if i want to i'm gonna get one shot anyway right because i'm playing a glass cannon so because uh, that's another one of the complaints right like basically every character builds the same right now at the moment and you say, oh, but that's not true, blah, blah. If you're not building the same, you're building wrong. <laughs> All right. Every character is the same. You go props, right? You go uh, you go with your crit avoidance, You go, and then you go full dodge, full HP. Boom. That's it, right? And you don't build damage anywhere. 
because you don't need it, right? And except you're doing super, super, super high arena where protections and HP and all that doesn't matter whatsoever. So you can just go full on dodge and just pray to God that you don't get hit and just go full blast, right? Which turns the game into a more PoE where it clears everything, right? If they are dead, they can't hit you. Yeah. So yeah, they definitely... And the old system had that, right? Like in the old system, you never had that thing where like, oh my god, man, like I have the best gear in the game and I got one shot and there's nothing I can do. I've never experienced that. Right now, you can have the best gear in the game and you reach certain points in the game, which are very early, right? Where you just feel like, again, like let's just put arena as a perspective. If I, I, I played marksman, right? And I played Marksman on my softcore account where I have 40 million gold, all the items in the game. I, I played for like a, a month on this character, my detonating arrow. And I pushed 400 waves, right? Yep. Two, two, two months of grinding, yeah? Or something like that, like a month and a half. I go and play on an SSF tournament, playing the same class. And I play for three days, right? And I do the same waves, 400 waves. There's a problem here. And again, I'm using the arena because it's the only kind of like example, example that I can use. I'm not saying this is not, but this is not a problem in the, in the arena, right? I'm not saying, oh, they should just make the arena. Blah. No, no, no. It's not okay that a character with three days and a character with 40 days can do the same content. Straight up, it's, it's just not, right? So, um, so do you think that the changes that they're, they're going to introduce for defense, do you think that it will make gearing harder? Do you think that they're going to make it easier? They're going to make it easier, and so that's going to even exaggerate this problem more. You're going to be able to get your caps and all that even in a day or two now. This, this, is, what I would la this is what I'm thinking. I think they're going to make it easier, but they're going to add stuff to make it deeper. You're, you're going to be able to cap your resistances with less affixes than now, so you have more freedom, so you can get... You know, you're playing minions, fucking poison. You can build your minion stuff and you don't, you don't feel like, oh shit, I don't have slots to, right? It's going to be easier to cap your reses, but hopefully, because you're going to have more slots, you can fit those slots with the hard shit. If, you, if you're feeling me. So easier, it's going to be, I think they're going to make, I think we're gonna, they're going to make it so we need less affixes to cap prots. Oh, that's what I, I think, anyway. And hopefully, those empty slots that we get for free, now that we need less slots, we're going to be able to fill with the interesting stuff, like the plus skills, maybe damage mitigation, something cool like that. Uh, I don't know, uh, uniques, legendaries when they come. Uh, I mean, right now, right, if they keep the gearing how it is, where you basically use your entire fucking gear to be just capped on everything, how, how the fuck are we gonna are, are we gonna fit in the goods the cool shit if we already like gear tax like the, the current system is so gear taxing because you need you need dodge if you don't have dodge just quit right you need dodge you need crude avoidance and you need full rest on everything and then you need some sort of HP so you don't just get one tap by one archer that, that's already like that's so much more taxing than the previous system which was basically glancing glow and after that you were Gucci right. Getting into those interesting rare fixes, what do you think for the class-specific relics? Do you think that you'll be able to get the plus one skills there? Do you think that it'll be brand new rare yeah. fixes? Or do you think it'll be more of what you have already on the chest and helm? I think they're probably going to keep chest and helm how they are, and maybe they're going to do something completely different with relics. I mean, relics always been a bit unique, uh, in the sense that you can get, like, you know, for example, crit multi and stuff like that. So I don't know. Hopefully, hopefully the relic. Uh, I really, I really hope they 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 add something impactful and powerful into the relic slot. Something that you know when you kind of like how amulets are in the game. That amulets are kind of special because you can draw penetration, or you can get like very cool. Like I, I think a lot of the amulets are the best items in the game. You know, you got the you got Orians, you got like Funk, you got the. They're they're pretty. I think I would say they're like you have the. Whatever the one that gives minion crit multiplier, Dead Rattle, I think it's called. Like, uh, amulets are pretty are a, a pretty hot uh, a pretty hot uh, slot. So hopefully, amulet uh, relic becomes something as hot. Uh, so, so what I'm most interested about it is what they did when they did chest and helm. 
mm-hmm. uh, class specifically. The the major thing that changed was that the implicits on them became way more powerful yeah. because you you no longer had to worry about globally balancing it. You had these things that were going to be for that character alone. So like the Primalist got 300% freeze multiplier and, and yeah. it was built specifically for that class. For so if you look at that and you look that relics are now going to have that, what do you think the class specific relics would have for the new implicits? Now they don't say it comes with new implicits, but obviously they're, they you know, they, they have to. Yeah. What do you think? Do you think uh, wh- what class do you think will get the uh, say the crit multi? Do you think the rogue's gonna get get the crit multi, or do you think that you'll be able to to get that on the on the turbo vengeance? Um, I mean, I can take wild guesses, right? But um, I mean, I would like to see uh, something that supports pets. I don't play pets, but I think it would be pretty cool if they have actually minion-based stats, because uh, you know the. Pet users and minion users already use a lot of their gear on themselves because obviously, if not, they just die. So, and obviously, right now for pet users, like the uh, relic implicit, like what do you want? Crit multi, like fires, fire damage, like it's useless, right? So, hopefully, they they can get some uh, really juicy um, stuff for those classes that can't use any of the current stuff. Uh, I, I, to be honest, I just think there's so many builds where you just go relic and you're like, well, well, what do I use? Like, nothing is good. Like, like I, I have like the fire one, right, which you don't use. Uh, the crit one, well, I'm not doing crit. Well, I can't use it either. And what else? Like ignite chance, I'm doing bleed. Like, <laughs> so ho- hopefully there's just like, obviously since what you're saying, they're designed for um, the class. Hopefully they're they're gonna come with specific. Um, a specific um, kind of like uh, implicits that benefit those classes in particular, right? Yeah, I'm really hoping that those relics come with, uh, you know, some really powerful, just just like the helm and the chest do, um, and and they let you build more niche into things that you currently might be lacking just a little yeah. bit. Um, it's it's funny that uh, they decided they're gonna make relics like uh, they're gonna give a. I mean, we were kind of like guessing it that eventually relics were gonna get some love because they were all really old and kind of like useless. Because I was talking with Fo about it and I was talking, oh, if I made a unique in the game, what would it be? And I said, 100% a relic, right? Why? Because I, I, I know you can fit it in because relics are useless. Right? So, uh, and I, I was actually joking about making like a, you know, like a kind of like a like a chalice kind of thing, kind of like Templar base for like vengeance or some something cool, right? Like plus seven to vengeance or something, right? Or ben- when you're full HP, vengeance gives, uh, get 70% crit multi or something, something nasty. For some uh, reason, I just, I can't picture you wanting to do that. I don't know why. Yeah, right? Uh, dude, I'm so scared. Like, let's not talk about vengeance anymore. They're gonna change that, I don't <laughs> I, I think that Vengeance is a skill that's definitely going to see some changes in that uh, when they revisit skills because I think they know that half the tree never gets touched because I, I think they're going to make it more appeasing to play different ways. So I'm think, really curious think, what they do. I think two thirds of the, I think all of the stuff, all of the attack, I mean the attack speed got nerfed, but it's still good if you want it. Like the extra repost is good if you want it. The void, uh, the void essences are okay. If you if you're doing that, the penetration stuff is really good, and obviously all the more damage is good. Then the bottom, the bottom, the bottom, like this bottom thing is like, yeah, garbage. Well, but, well you have your armor shred right up in that top. Sometimes you use that, but yeah, yeah the rest of that, it's just. That's, good. that's really. I mean, I wish I could use that and all the multiplicative damages, right? Yeah, so we do. We went over the class specific relics, um, and it was funny because literally before that got posted, like a week ago, I was in. Uh, I think it was just Discord that I was chatting. It might have been a forum post, but I was saying how I would have liked the rings and the amulet. But now that I think about it, rings and relic would have been way better to change into class specific slots, and then for them to add um, a couple of new slots that were you know global you know such as like pants shoulders arm guards some uh-huh. something else a couple of different slots more but the reason slots. the reason that more class specific spots i thought would be needed was because one they would be more sought after so like the helmet chest are your more exciting drops because you yeah, are for looking sure. for those rare fixes so relics 
after this patch are obviously going to be more sought after. But it's it's one of those things where it's like I don't understand how rings don't fit that category because rings, whether you play games in real life, it doesn't matter. Rings are power. It, it like yeah. all religion I'm, I'm is based be, around. Yeah. yeah, religions based around rings. Real life, you know, if you're, you're a priest or a rapper, you have a badass ring. Yeah, and if you go to, I mean, if you go on a hiking trip and you see a hat laying on the ground that's been there for three months, you know, you don't want to help. You're not going to put a hat on your head. But if you found a ring that's yeah. five thousand years yeah. old, you're going to be like, "Fuck yeah!" Gold, you know, like it, it was a ring by choice, not a hat. You know, it wasn't. Uh, so yeah, so I, I'm super surprised that rings aren't aren't class specific and have honest, extraordinary powers. Have a lot of love. Like, now that we're talking about this. Because is there any other ring than silver ring? Let's be honest. Like, uh... Nope. No, a unique yeah. ring occasionally, but but no, silver rings, yeah. movement speed, that implicit um, on it. it. That might be one of those things that changes when they, when they you know, rework the, all the, the system. rings are, st like, especially now, like, if you're, for example, if you're Captain Prots, like, why the f why would you use a gold ring, for example? And you, gold rings, I don't. If you you obviously remember this. Do you remember when gold rings could raise your uh, twenty percent increase elemental risk? Dude, gold rings were like, if you dropped like a, I think I have a clip on my Twitch where I dropped like a, I don't know, like a tier twenty ring with perfect implicit, and we crafted there on stream, and it was. I, I don't have that anymore, and uh, I think that's what the. A, a lot of people that might be new to the game, you know, they they see some of us veterans and. They hear us like grumping and being like, oh my god, this system here. And they say, what do you mean? It's good. Like, I'm having fun. Yeah, yeah, you're having fun, but you haven't experienced that dopamine rush of like rolling those items that, uh, you know, they could really make your character better. You, you, that's kind of lost. Like, I haven't, I haven't been excited for an item for, I don't know. Yeah, it's 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 definitely one of those things where I feel like they just they just need to go all out on the class specific stuff, and it's probably a lot of work, but you know there's so much more intriguing to find things, and maybe just adding more fixes will will do that. But I I just I think they just need a lot more slots that are like you whenever you craft on your helm and your chest, are you ever struggling? for like oh i don't know what to put there or is it more of a wow i got 10 10 things that i could put right there and i don't yeah, know which yeah, one yeah. i want that yeah, that's yeah. more of what i would want on Actually, every on gear slot right on the prefixes till the till now till now yeah. because we're gonna get the plus to skills till now it's very simple you get dodge and whatever your main stat is or vitality if you're doing like a block build and you're not using dodge or whatever you know but uh, basically but on the pre but you're completely right on the on the suffixes it's like all the class specific suffixes and, and especially because they're actually pretty powerful and they if you it's a big difference from having a tier one to a tier five you know you can go from like 40 percent increased damage to 190 or something like in some of the cases right that, yeah. that's what I'm, that's what the game needs right that's what i was talking about the idols and those those pieces of gear should be noticeable when you get them you should get it and you should feel, oh shit, I'm killing shit fast now, right? And right now, well, you're, we do so much damage for free, with or without the item, that why would you grind the item? Especially from, because if you actually want to get like, let's just say you want to get an exalted chest piece, right? You're playing multi-shot, you want a tier 5 multi-shot per arrow damage exalted chest piece, and obviously it needs to be better than your tier, tier 20 crafted one. So it's gonna have tier five dodge, tier five dex, uh, you know, bl uh, damage with a bow, blah blah. Like you, you are never, never in your dreams gonna get that, right? Unless you get turbo lucky. And if you get it, it's not even that good. It's like, oh, sweet, uh, fifty percent increase that when I'm already one shotting everything. Nice. There was nothing mentioned about being able to one skip boss fights or after boss fights being able to continue your continue. streak. What are your thoughts on that? I think, dude, the old monolith, it was simple. It didn't have bosses, it didn't have blessings, but holy moly, like people were excited for streaks. And not only that, you didn't feel punished by streaks because you always had at least four options to choose the modifiers you wanted, right? Because you could have the two, reroll, and then new two, right? And, in, and we didn't even have a real reason to go for 
item find to stack item find back then because to be honest most of the items you we were just getting yellows exalted were not a thing right we would just gamble for uniques anyway right and dude imagine the old system right with exalted items dude people would be grinding like no people wouldn't give a shit about the bosses the blessings nothing people would just be grinding monolith just to get that 300 streak or whatever just so they can get like 10,000, 2,000, whatever, you know, magic item find, which is not magic find, by the way, that doesn't exist in this game. Just to, a chance at a purple, right? Like, I would do it now, you see, but the problem is like right now in the current system, if you want to do that, you say, hey, I already got my blessings, I already killed the bosses, I don't give a shit about or any of what Monolith is intended to, I actually want a magic item find in Monolith, which is what it was supposed to be. Monolith was an item finding endgame right that was all about you went to monolith to find items and idols that was its purpose right now what's the purpose of monolith getting your blessings end of the story and getting guardian glyphs yeah <laughs> right and arena keys yep they need to make sure that monolith gets back that item finder property because right now like I don't, I don't even. There is literally no reason to go monolith right now because this is what happens. You go to the monolith. You have your your strongest character can do 400 arena waves, right? Really strong. Uh, let's just. I'm playing a crit build. Go into the monolith. I'm. I, I've been playing monolith for nine hours, right? I'm at, at strict 150. I have like 600, 800 item find. I'm still finding the same shit pretty much, right? Because it only gets crazy after, when you get to like the 200s and up, really. And then guess what? Oh, enemies get dodge modifier, and I have the quest echo that I can take because it resets my progress. Oh, I reset. Oh, they got dodge again. Oh, great. Well, I take dodge. I struggle for like ten minutes, and then on the next, uh, I, on the next modifier, they get crit avoidance. Oh, and glancing blow, and I reroll, and they just end up having all this. Basically, they get all these modifiers where my character can't crit, can't hit. When it hits, they have glancing blow, and it just creates this artificial difficulty which is not real difficulty it's just like basically the modifiers make my character not work the monsters aren't stronger my character is weaker that's the difference and uh, it's just like I, I don't i i think playing monolith is absolute when that happens to you it feels it feels it, it feels unfair it feels disgusting it feels not fun uh it feels uh, like a waste of time and you just wanna you just wanna uninstall and um and that's uh, that is how it is like um if you are actually going for high streaks 150 or plus streaks in monolith it's just absolutely disgusting to play and they they didn't mention anything about new affixes in the uh, short little forum post they did about the new monolith content or the fresh monolith content but what do you think um do you think there will be new monolith affixes to choose from what are your thoughts on like hybrid affixes really like hope. i'm really surprised hope. i'm surprised they haven't given hybrid affix choices where you can choose certain items to drop but it comes with you know a secondary uh, effect that yeah, that would be the critical strike avoidance or the dodge or whatever you know you give the mob but at least it would give you more choices to like find what it is you're looking for this is how i see it for me why is arena fun because the monsters don't get crude avoidance, the monsters don't get fucking, you know, they don't get dodge all the time, so mobs, I think they should just remove that, right? And they don't get glancing blow and stupid stuff like that. That's why it's fun, you fight, you know, your character is this, you know, it's a 7 out of 10 strength, and you fight versus monsters, and you know what you're gonna fight, right? The reason Monolith feels so painful is that the monsters are not getting stronger, you're getting weaker. I think they need to make sure that when they design mono modifiers, uh, they need to think, okay, is this making the monster stronger or the, or the player weaker? You say, what do you mean, Lizard? That's the same. No, it's not. Right? Because for if you're giving the monster the ability to not get hit, you're not making the you're just making me weaker. You need to make the content harder without affecting the gameplay of the guy. Like, if I'm playing a crit build and Sally, I can't crit, you're not making the game harder, you're just fucking ruining my experience and you're making me hate myself. Right? And uh, it's really, like, how can you make the game harder? Make the enemies faster. Make the enemies bigger. Make the enemies, like, spawn enemies on kill. I don't I don't give a shit. Make 
this mo this map has siege columns. This monster is infested with beetle queens, like the old monolith, like uh, you know. But don't make modifiers that make my life pain. Make modifiers that makes the monsters exciting and hard, but without you know like, but without just like debuffing me. Like it's not that's it's just it just feels so like. You know, like you're hitting a monster and it's dodge, 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 dodge. Oh, I'm, 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 I'm a crit build and I can't crit. So when I hit, it's just, it's just, it feels, it's horrible. Like, uh, yeah, I've, I've done that a couple times with Wear Bear and it's, <laughs> I wasn't a Wear Bear you, anymore. You, you should, yeah, you, you don't, you don't want to play anymore. It's like, it's not fun. Um, moving on to uh, a little bit more of the items, we got the updated all unique items implemented before patch 7.7 i have no idea i didn't go back to look at all the idols that were implemented i know there's quite a few i know I items uh, or idols uh uniques U unique items are getting um reworked or updated that were yeah, implemented okay. before 7.7 .7. so uh i'm trying to think of some off the top of my head that were implemented that far back we have uh i don't um, know how new like death rattle is um orbital circuit the rings for movement speed um Undisputed is definitely one. Beast King. Okay, so seven point seven is the. I joined on seven point six, and we already had Undisputed. We already had. A, well, I have rings already been updated, but. Uh, yeah, you, there was quite a few. I mean, there was a lot of uniques in there. You there had to be. Uh, I think in my last video I said like twenty to a hundred, but there there was. More there was a lot in there. What do you think? Let's just take a couple of those. Let's start with. Uh, I think Undisputed's fine. I don't think that one really needs a rework. It's already kind of great. OP as it is. Um, let's look at a few that you get that you don't find super interesting right now, such as um, the slab. Let's let's look at the slab. What? The yeah, the the shield that uh, I believe it reduces your block chance and uh, and gives you. Uh, it takes away all damage when you do block or something like that. Yeah. Um, what do you What do you think the new ones are going to look like? Do you think that they're still going to have that same kind of effect, but just be stronger on the same affixes, or do you think that they're going to give them all new identities altogether? I have no idea, honestly. <laughs> I, uh, sometimes I, I think I mean. Sometimes I think I know what I'm saying, but uh, in this case, I'm I actually have no idea. What would you like to see them do? I would like to see items that are um, good and that are interesting uh, enough. For example, I like what they did to Vol Volcanus, uh, the sword, when they reworked the, the sword and they buffed it or whatever. That sword is actually pretty pretty good now. Like uh, Again, it's not the best sword in the, in the world, but 77 melee physical damage, and you can Again, really nice. Like it's hard to roll well because you can roll 37 to 57, 37 to 57, 37 to 57. But if you max roll all of that, that this weapon is actually, and it's a level 58 weapon. That weapon is actually really, really solid, right? That's Would you have liked point. that item better if, if it instead maybe removed just one of the affixes it had and had a converts whatever skill it is you're using, all all physical damage that's added is now fire damage. Or do you think that skills themselves should be the one that does that? That's a difficult question. I think you, you, it's probably good to have both, so player can choose. If you're gonna do those, if you wanna have that in the game, I think it's good that you are gonna. You need to make sure that you plan ahead. That there's different ways to achieve it. Otherwise, like if something ends up being good, it's just gonna feel really mandatory kind of thing. Like for example, imagine you're. Let's just use Vengeance again. I'm playing Paladin and I'm, I'm, I'm using this Vengeance Fire build, right? And, oh, but it's it only works if I use Volcanus, because it's the only way to convert Vengeance to Fire, right? Uh, kind of, I mean, the build defining versus build enabling, right? Uh, I'm kind of like a more participant, I, I'm... I don't really, I don't really like build enabling, because it just feels mandatory, kind of like lazy slash sets in the three kind of thing. Like, oh, my build doesn't work if I if I don't have this item, but I do have build defining. So, for example, imagine you're playing poison, 
and you get Plague Bear. Can you play the build without Plague Bear? Yeah, you can, but it's if you get that weapon, it's gonna be good, right? Or better. Uh, so that's kind of like what I like me personally, but I understand that some people... Uh, I mean, ideally, in the game, you want to have both for the people who like it and the people who don't, right? Some builds, you're going to be able to do whatever you want, uh, you're going to have defining stuff, and then some builds are going to be enabling. Uh, so if you like, so people can choose. Uh, if it was for me and I had to choose one, I, I rather have the, I rather have the, the def, uh, the defining rather than the enabling. I, I hate like for example this kind of like mentality of, oh I'm gonna play the build and I'm just gonna play it till I drop this item and then the build works and that's it. Like I don't know. I think I, I again I like progression, and if you have items that are the enabling, it means that that progression is, it's like black or white, right? Because if you don't have that item, there's no progression. So I like to be like start from zero, go to one, two, three, four, five, six. So yeah, I, I I feel you. And the reason I asked about Volcanus actually in particular is I was recently trying to do a build with it, and I was doing Flame Reef with the Spellblade, which you know is fire skill. But there's just you, especially with dual welding in the picture. There's ways to get added fire damage even more than Volcanus, and then um, it just it it just almost every way I used it, it just made sense to go dual welding or to use or to well, just stack physical with it. The um, damage is just two hundred. I just. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, I really hope they, uh, in my opinion, they should just uh, make sure 200 has extra range or AoE. You know, dual wielding is going to have the more stats, the more attack speed, the more blah, 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 right? But if you look at the uh, 100 weapons, right, normally the range is really slow. Uh, obviously, unless you're using a skill that doesn't care about the weapon range, right? Like Rife, for example. But, uh, for example, if you're playing Vengeance and you're playing Vengeance dual wield, like you, 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 you have like a pinky, like a pinky vengeance. You put on a Sofnia and you're fucking swinging, right? Um, so maybe I think right now, I mean, if you obviously the best way is just to go shield because shields are OP as fuck. But it, or you go dual and just go, you just go berserker, right? And right now, two hundred, I played because I like the fantasy of it, but it's so garbage. <laughs> It's so yeah. bad. Even even that even before, right? For example, two hundred is like well, two hundred has good bases like Sofnia, where you can get base crit and blah blah, right? And uh, it has it had advantages, right? If you wanted to go, but right now, like you can just get two weapons, craft implicit crit on both of the weapons, and you're gonna have more crit, more attack speed, more damage, more more everything. And th to be honest, that ten percent that more damage taken. Well, you're getting f one shot anyway. <laughs> the wave 300, 200 or 100. So, pfft, if you get the one, hit the ones, you're gonna get stunned and you're gonna die. So it doesn't matter. You're yeah. getting hit by if you have a thousand HP and you get hit by three thousand or four thousand, it doesn't matter. It's, so. Yeah, I'll be curious to see what they what they do with that to to kind of equal it because I I feel the same way. Like every build that has dual welding, there's very I haven't. There's very few cases, um, unless they add more things like they've done for the Primalist, where you can get these additional boosts with a two-handed. So um, yeah. in the Primalist tree, you can get like 50 added damage with a two-handed, I think, blunt or a... Um, I think it's a sword or a blunt. I, th I think there's two different choices, but they don't do they don't do the pull arm, which is what you really want for serpent yeah, strike yeah. And, and things like that. So there's no like super synergy. Yeah, but if they arm, introduce more no, things like that, a single, there's not a single passive in pull arm, which pisses me off because I love Sovnia. So yeah, um, but yeah. Okay, well, moving on to the skills. We got a couple of new skills that were teased. Obviously, maybe there will be even a couple more that are released, but we also know that all skills are revisited, so we're basically looking at a lot of new skills. Uh, but let's... Yeah. Let's, let's look at Surge for a second, because we actually got like a preview for that. For Surge, what are you most excited for for Surge? Well, I like, I like, I like dashing around. I'm a volatile reversal main. I'm going turbo, we go fast, we go hard, right? So, I... I honestly think the Spellblade is very, very boring gameplay because most Spellblade builds are now based around the one, two, three, boom, one, two, three, boom, and it's kind of like repetitive and boring and charging your like, you know, your firebrand or whatever, and then you do the big whatever you're doing and you just do a million damage for free, right? 
pretty boring, I don't like it. But now this ability, which is a new movement, dynamic, kind of like poker skill, suddenly like Spell it feels like it has a lot of downtime because you basically it's always the same gameplay. You wait for a flame ward, you wait for an animate weapon or whatever enchant weapon, and then you do the one, two, three combo, and then you do the thing, and then you wait for your cooldowns and you do it again. And it's just so boring. I, I hate that kind of like I like those that you can just always do whatever. So obviously this ability that brings like more mobility, uh, one, one would assume is gonna be a lower cooldown, uh, plus having teleport at the same time. I can just imagine, you know, like uh, teleport in, scour uh, scourge in, and then teleport back, and then uh, it's kind of like what I like to do. And uh, maybe I don't need to do one, two, three anymore. So uh, I'm excited yeah, I... for. I'm, I'm definitely gonna make a spell bleed for sure. Uh, probably first character I, I'll do, unless there's like bigger changes. That... I was the the thing I was most excited for when I first saw it was like. I'm in the process of doing leveling guides, and I was looking out. I was like, "Sweet, we can move much faster uh -huh. early game." But then I realized, as a spellblade skill, it's obviously going to be locked above the halfway point in the tree, uh -huh. which means you're going to be done with the I campaign mean, before you even get it. So, you know, then it, then not, I was looking at not. it. Maybe they put it kind of like close, kind of like where sigils is. You know? Well, it's. Yeah, it, it, well, that's what I mean. It's got to be at least at the 25 because it, yeah. obviously you can't access it as a mage. So I was looking at it, and then um, it, it's still a hybrid skill. It's still going to let you do spell damage on top of melee damage. It looks uh, The one thing I was mostly excited about is that it synergizes with um, multiple things. You have statics, you have lightning blast, you have invulnerability, um, you can get lightning damage. So you'll be able to, unfortunately, it won't synergize with, say, Firebrand or Shatter Strike, which none of those correlate with with lightning but well, flame reef has lightning, reef lightning so yeah. you might be able to get some synergy with that um, unfortunately there's only like of course like four or five notes so we can't see all of them we don't know what it is but the thing that got me the most excited was mm -hmm. the duration that you would be able to increase it to get more of the effects out of it yeah uh, what, no, what do you think slower, right? Yeah, so you dash the same distance, but you move but slower, slower, and yeah. I'm assuming that, because it says that you get um, uh, lightning blast cast while while surging, yeah. and you get, you know, you're invulnerable while surging, so obviously you'd be invulnerable longer, and if lightning blast is actually, I, I don't know if it's going to be a, you get one lightning blast per surge, or if it's a, um, every second yeah, of surging going, that yeah, you get a lightning like blast. What you do with disintegrate. Yeah, so it'll be interesting to see, you know, what all you can really do with it, um, and and what kind of distance you're actually surging, what the cooldown on it's going to be, because you think about it as a dash skill, you want it like shift, you want something that you can use quite frequently because you're constantly, mm -hmm. as a melee character, trying to you know dash in between all the characters. But if you're invulnerable, you know, and you're able to slow it down, how much are you invulnerable? Um, you can still reduce the cooldown quite a bit. You have lunge; it has the same thing in lunge where you're invulnerable. Even shift has invulnerability inside yeah, of it. What you're saying, right? Lunge is really fast, and shift is really fast too. So you kind of like basically have to perfectly time it, right? I don't know. Maybe this thing that you're mentioning, maybe you can make it so slow that you're like. <laughs> yeah, I, I, it, and I think that depends. The maybe the node inside of it. I'm assuming it's probably going to be limited to begin with, with just the node inside of it. But if you uh -huh. get duration on on you know chest or idols, like who knows how slow you can really make it. Um, I doubt you're going to be able to move like a slug. It wouldn't make much sense. You know, maybe, but maybe, maybe you surge, you move like a slug. All the enemies come to you in that time period, and you're invulnerable, and then you you just shatter it. You know, you just shatter strike real quick, and then you do it again. It, it um, seems like it's going to have CC too. I, I like that they use the word immobilize. I don't think we've seen that before, right? Immobilize. There's immobilize in a few things. Um, yeah. Rogue has it. Root. I've seen root. I've seen stun. Right? What? Immobilize? immobilize? God, what skill is it on? Is it puncture? I, don't know. I think puncture, when Maybe it charges, can ones. immobilize yeah. on on rogue. Um, but here's here's the other thing. There's there's no preview of using it. And uh, what's funny is when I looked at it and what I saw what it can do. So you have to think about this. You surge, 
you're you're lightning. This is a lightning skill. You're surging, oh. which you think of uh, electricity or, or like static or, or something, mm -hmm. and then you can cast lightning blast out of it. The moment that I saw that and I looked at it, the first thing that came to my mind is the new Diablo 4 teaser, where the mm -hmm. li the wizard turns yeah, into a ball and is shooting lightning off the whole time. And I'm like, that. I, I wonder. I I'm wondering game. what it's gonna look like when you use surge. Are you gonna transform into something, or is it your character actually like like moving? Because I was like, if you transform into a lightning ball for for a second it's gonna be a little weird yeah transform into a, a light yeah it could be like a lightning bolt sword that goes forward um, but that was the first thing I saw and I was kind of laughing because I I had just made a, like comments about that before about how how I like it and, and whatnot but I hate it I, I hate the long cooldown it's like uh... well <laughs> that's that's just a number we can get that changed okay okay for sure <laughs> Uh, what else do we got? As we move down, um, the new Beastmaster skill, Warcry. What do you think it's gonna do? What What do you What do you want from it? I mean, all I'm thinking is Beastmaster is no longer a pet class. We delete all the pets. Beastmaster is a beast and a master at the same time. So it's like in leather, where he's like a Dominus kind of guy. He's Warcrying and he's going full on Diablo 2 barbarian. That's what I want. Now, what it's going to be, it's going to be, like, Frenzy Totem for minions. <laughs> That's what I think. It's just going to be a buff, right? Or maybe it has, like, town properties, like in Diablo 2, you know, Singer Barbarian. It could be a town. You know, they've been introducing a lot of towns, and towns are broken. So, uh, it could be a town. It could, it could be a buff for your pets. It could be a buff for yourself. It could, be, it could apply a debuff, you know, uh... Maybe it's all of them combined, you know, all of the singer barbarians from Diablo, from Diablo 2, they could just be on one skill, so who knows. But, uh... Yeah, it's it's hard, I mean, obviously when you hear Warcry, you're thinking instantly it's a buff, you know, you're gonna let out a fucking Warcry, and it's gonna buff, it's gonna enrage things around you, and, and stuff's gonna happen. And the problem that I have with that when I think about it is, that's what Frenzy Totem already does, you know, Frenzy Totem already gives base damage to your minions and you, it already gives a damage boost, gives an attack it speed boost. Warcry is gonna be basically like Frenzy Totem, right? And Frenzy Totem is gonna be something else, that's what I'm saying. Oh, you think they might change Frenzy Totem around? It could, it's totally people, possible. A lot, of, a lot of people want to see real minion builds, like basically like a mine, you know, like just your minions. Because right now, let's be honest, like totems are basically buffs in Last Epoch. Like you can't do a totem build, like a totem build at the moment. I mean, you can if you're declaring the campaign. And, I, I mean, I do that, you know, I level with Thorn Totem, right? But uh, for the end game, they're absolute. Pathetic, yeah. Right? So, um, so maybe they, they want to make totems like a playstyle, um, and Warcry is kind of like taking is that the new frenzy. property. Yeah, maybe. Uh, I mean, it's obviously going to be something like that, right? It's definitely going to be some... I don't see it doing like damage, right? I see it being like a utility slash buff slash CC. Oh, it's slash... definitely going to be a buff. There's no way that I see yeah. that being a... Uh, I mean, it maybe it could be a, a lunge type skill, but it, it wouldn't make much sense. But maybe you let out a war cry as you lunge in well, and, you know and it hit really something. Maybe, this, they did get. Maybe, I was gonna say they, how, they did get rid of they, uh, <laughs> they did get rid of like flanking strike, which was supposed to be a a yeah. don't you leap in front of your companion or a companion leaps to distract while you attack. It's funny that you say that because I was gonna say that based of the new technology they got on the rogue and the shadows and all that. It could be that uh, Warcry is attached to the different pets. So when you Warcry, your pets will do shit, right? For example, Warcry and your wolves uh, jump or, uh, you know... Uh, Become enraged or, or have some sort yeah, of effect. Or, uh, but I, I would imagine that there would, it would be something a bit more... Uh, not just like you know they get haste for two seconds or whatever. Something like actual, like for example, you 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 war cry, and then your raptor does like a like a spits poison or some shit. I don't know. You know like a proper they get like proper skills. Like basically, thanks to your war cry, you can make your current pets better. Like it's like like a, a second tree of the pets inside aside of their trees. So it something like that. It would almost be like combining, uh, well, so like entangling roots can give a huge poison, yeah, exactly. you know, dot Something chance. Like 
And then you have Edder's Blessing, which usually gives some sort of passive effect depending mm -hmm. on which companion. It'd be like combining those to where you choose the pet and then you get to choose what it what happens to it. It's just on the tree, depending on what you spec when you work right, different shit happens. You know, you could spec aggressively, defensively, like Cry <laughs> you work right, your pets heal up. I don't know, it could be anything. Yeah, I'm definitely excited for it. It's one of those... I, well, you know I like the Beastmaster. I like the Primalist in general. I try to make a lot of builds on it. Unfortunately, it's it just I needs like some Werber. love. <laughs> Where Bear's great, um, but it, yeah, it like needs some work too. <laughs> but It needs idols. That's what it needs. It needs idols. It needs... Um, uh, its mana oh. system needs some rework. Or it, it, I, think so? I, I think it's okay with the crit yeah. and stuff. Well, you can use it that way, but the fact I, I don't like that they make you choose that you have to build into being a hundred percent crit if you right. want to stay in a werebear form, or you have to like they. I, I just it feels too chosen out the way you have to build it, and I don't like the spell damage thing. I don't like that you put into spell damage and somehow you get more melee damage and crit chance because you stack spell really damage. Thing. Yeah, on a on a really on a melee bear, it, it's really weird <laughs> the, the way it's set up. And then it's a what's bear. well, it's a magical bear, but it doesn't do magic. Is the weird thing. Like it would be cool if you be built into that, and then you got it's it's just weird. And then it's it's it, it's not horrible because once you take those, now you can do spell idols in order to like. So you do have weird bear idols, but they're they're spell damage idols. It's it's just really really weird uh, and. It's just so easy to fix that. What if they just like imagine? What if they just added a node on Werber? You know how like you can make uh, you have a node that makes you crit and you get mana on crit. What if they just added a node and it makes it so you can't crit, but it reduces the mana cost of swipe? Yeah, I'd be okay. I I don't like you that know? they they made it to where skills had a minimum amount. So like you you can't go under two mana cost for things. Yeah. So it's like, well, that's dumb. <laughs> like like but if I want to be in werebear, you should give me ways to do that. Dude, I have no idea what they're against like perma spinning, perma werebear, perma like like dude, if, well, you, if people want to play warpath, they want to be warpathing. Like, they have a, I think this have this like philosophy thing, right? Where there's a choice that they want mana to be a resource and I under I understand, you know, I like that when you make a build you have to think about how you're gonna gain mana. I don't like that mana is basically like trivial. But you know, they don't want mana on kill, they don't they don't want mana still, right? And uh, for example, going back to Diablo 2, great game by the way, uh, in Diablo 2 mana at the beginning is, is a pain in the ass. In in fact I would say it's so much of a pain in the ass that you're just spamming mana potions all left and right. But later on in the game, thanks to your gear and your progression you know, you get mana on kill, mana steal, blah blah, and then you you know you don't even need mana potions anymore because you're just like a god, right? And it feels for it feels really fucking weird that I have a level hundred sorcerer, godlike god of gods, right? And I still need to stop to focus every three seconds, you know, like uh, it's just a uh, it's just kind of like a uh, why like uh, I'm a god, like I should. Don't get me wrong. I should like I should make sure that my build has built for the mana sustain, and I'm taking it into account and blah blah. blah. But uh, I, I I I don't I understand they're also scared about playing with mana because it will obviously speed up the game. Like the fact that you need to care about mana and you can just spam and you gotta wait for your mana back, it's what makes the game not speed up. And they don't want a game to be like Poe, right? So I understand what they're doing, why they're doing it, right? But what you're saying is completely true. There needs to be other... For example, look at the, the Vengeance build, right? The Vengeance builds I'm playing. Like you're, you're getting mana from Vengeance because I, I gear, I geared for it on my chest. And I can spawn, I can cast Sigils, I Vengeance, I get my mana back and I create this flow and I geared for it and it works. And I, I, it only works because I have enough attack speed so my mana is going up. Because the more Vengeance you do, the more Vengeance you get. And then you basically have this endgame build that doesn't care about mana anymore because it cared about mana while the theory crafting happened. And what you're saying is completely true, that there are some builds that you're not just not allowed to do that, right? Like, well, you have to focus, or A, you gotta crit with whatever, or because we say so, and it just feels bad, <laughs> I guess. Yeah, yeah. The, I hate I, focus, by the way. 
yeah i it's funny because as one of the newer ones that thing's been redone like two or three times and i don't I see it getting another so rework I, I like the old one because it felt faster. I mean, there are ways to make this one if you do the half second, like kind of spurt, you can get you can get it to go quite a ways. But I I like the old one faster because it was more reliable. Like you, yeah, you could, could do it, it for yeah whenever and however you long you wanted. Half a second, you could do it for ten seconds. So you could fit it to any situation. Right now, like if you play this like going negative play style, it's like well, what if I don't want to go negative? Like what if I'm finding a guy and I have a wolf chasing me and it's just so fun. It, it basically makes it. Diablo 3-ish, if you and I hate that, like you know, where you have your combo of your you use your skill that consumes rage and then you do this. I, I hate that. Uh, I think it makes the the gameplay loses so many layers because you're just limited by your cooldowns and your resource, right? Yeah. And again, it, it, it's it's uh, is it gonna really change the 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 flow of the build? I don't think so, right? Like uh, at the end of the day, like if you're playing landing Nova. If you, like old focus with the new focus, lining Nova is the same. The, 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 you know what pisses me off about focus? Completely off topic. What was the problem of focus? What was everyone's complaint about focus? It's yeah, mandatory. Just... Yep. Right? It's mandatory. Every build needs focus. Has that changed? No, it's still there. Well, unless you if want to use mana strike, but it's the same as it was. For, for spellblade, for, 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 for sorcerer though, has it changed? No, right? Is it better or worse than before? More worse, right? It's like it, it depends. If you play the way they want you to play, it's it can be better. But yeah, it's it's not a play your way. It's play the way we told you to play. Yeah, I, exactly. It's, it's, it, it has less options for me. If it has less options, and it's just worse, right? So, and the main issue, which was this ability is mandatory, is still there. So. And no one complained about focus being like not fun or not strong or people complained about I have to use it on every build. Not and basically that that problem is still there. And now, for example, I stopped playing sorcerer, literally. And I played sorcerer every day, right? Because I just focus, it just feels like that I go it goes into the fucking and it's, it's, I can't I can't I can't. It's just like I think it's one of the problems time. they they have though at the same time is they haven't introduced any any skills like mana strike or you know like all the other skills that have these zero costing skills that generate mana that you have on all these other classes and the problem is is if you introduce one just one focus will learn. never be used again there would again. be no reason yeah. to ever use focus so Maybe, but the thing is, is, do you want to stand still and get mana, or would you rather continue on doing damage and using a zero cost skill to to gain mana? And so, like, it it's so like it's almost like you you either say that that uh, focus is going to be mandatory if you want mana back, and it's going to stay that way, or you're basically going to have to you know change it up and make it a, a much funner skill, maybe even one that does some damage or something, and have and have a zero cost skill way of, of bringing mana back. What was wrong with the old one? I'm not. I wasn't even expecting it to change when it did, and I was surprised. Um, I think there was a couple. Maybe they didn't like the fact that it was so accessible, where without a cooldown, you were able to do it so much. And maybe they wanted to get away from that by adding a cooldown to make it more more thought out. But it's it didn't change the fact that you still have to use it. You still have to. It's I don't know. It's it's a really weird one. Um, maybe they yeah. have more changes uh, planned for, for, for it. Me, but... it completely ruined the flow. How I played Zork myself, it completely ruined the flow of the gameplay. It completely made it un unenjoyable for me. And I don't even, again, I don't play Zork anymore because of it. So. I think I I th Zork all the time. One of the other mechanics I think they hated with it was the fact that the more mana you had, the faster you could make it regen the wow. mana. You get you you get rewarded for progressing. But that was, I think that was one thing they saw. They're like, well. Okay, you stack 800 mana, and now you have all this mana that takes forever. You know, it was your way of getting around having to like focus. Was you get 800 mana, it takes a while to work it down, and then yeah, when you no, focus, no. now it just whoop, it goes right back. Um, I think that's I mean, one of the things that led to it. But the formula bit, you know, the fact to make it have a cap. It's as simple as that. Make it still it only scales to four up to 400, and that's it, right? It's yeah. So easy to me, like I don't get it. And, yeah. And, oh, there's this ability that everyone hates because. You know, everyone has to build it. Let's make it. Let's give it a cooldown so it's more annoying to use. Like, and if you if you don't have the cooldown, which is how I use it now, right? Uh, straight up, like, 
because uh, I can't play without it. It's just like so slow to get the mana back, you know, it's like but another thing though about and it said, well, but if you go negative, it's really good because yeah, what if you're playing a build that or an, an ability like fireball that costs like four mana? How reliable is going negative and focusing? Like you go negative four mana, right? You try to focus, and by the time focus starts channeling, your mana is up again, and, and you lose the cooldown and you don't get the mana. So, well, you got gosh. you got to throw that like, super expensive Armageddon black hole out there to make yeah, sure you're negative and to protect I need, yourself. <laughs> I need the extra spell to make sure focus works. Uh, yeah. yeah. Black Great. black hole is one of those skills I look forward to seeing if it gets changed and 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 how in which it's way. A cool skill, but it could definitely. I think it should just like interact with that. For example, why it doesn't actually cast real meteors. I think it's. I think that's just because of how old it is. I think at the time they didn't have that kind of synergy going on, and I, that's one of those things that I expected to fully have coming into this, and it's going to change the way that people use it. It's like, oh, I could spec meteor and fucking get it through black hole now, and now that black hole costs two hundred, now people are going to finally be using that teleport node to get the next skill free. So you're gonna, or they're going to be doing the negative mana with focus. There's going to be some niche play styles, I think, with that, but at least black hole will be to a point where. Where it's going to be viable enough that you're going to want to use it because it casts, you know, a massive damaging skill out there with it, and and it's actually effective. I don't. Know, it's going to be pretty cool. I would love to see Black Hole have the ability to, um, if you go lightning and cold with it, to be able to shoot out lightning blasts. I would love to see Armageddon yeah. use use uh, Armageddon to be able to use the meteor, and I would love to see another one that somehow shoots fireballs out. Like maybe maybe every enemy sucked in shoots one fireball yeah, out or something. And they just, like, around the it would be pretty yeah cool. I, I would definitely love to see some uh, some synergies there even with volcanic orb or something so like they're yeah. sucked into the black hole now they're suck on a volcanic orb and the orbs yeah, fucking destroying them like also can we remove the cooldown of volcanic orb please <laughs> <laughs> you don't why? like that huh <laughs> why uh, I've it's volcanic or it's not like you're gonna spam it you know, like. it's it's 80 mana it's super expensive it's got a cooldown and like you have to have it it's a cool skill and you have and, to use five points to get the cooldown to and it still has a cooldown. Like, and it and it has to stay stationary to do like the good damage. So you yeah, have to get mobs. Like, it's got, so it's it's a great skill, but it's got like three things that you have to do perfectly right that make it like so hard to use in actual so combat. It's like come today, on now. <laughs> today they make it so it reduces the cooldown, and you can cast it on the cursor, like Nova. That would be cool. Holy shit, that would be so fucked, dude. When you that, just like cast balls like that, like mines. Holy shit, that would be so cool. That, that would be pretty sweet. I would love to see a unique that either has it to where you can target it, or a unique no, that has like, it, like a, a pair of boots that has a chance to drop a volcanic orb behind uh, you as you run. Yeah. yeah. Or, or to shoot one off in a random direction. You know, whatever. Yeah. But, but yeah. Okay, getting into the animations. Uh, yeah, just to cover it real quick. Not a huge thing. It's, it's just uh, basically all primalist skills are being replaced or improved with their animations. And then they talk about how the transformations will be done at a later time. Um... What 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 primal skill do you think has the worst animation? And no, you cannot say Serpent Strike. I think Serpent Strike is great. <laughs> I, 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 I love it. I actually think it's great. Um, huh, the worst. I think summoning the pets is fucking... You know, when the guy goes like, oh, oh, and you get like rooted in place and stuff. Summoning of the pets is the worst. For, uh, I mean, game, it's not the animation, it's not that bad, but the gameplay of it, the flow of. I actually really like uh, how uh, Serpent Strike feels myself. Um, yeah, I don't have a problem with Serpent Strike. I, I, think, I, I think when you don't do channeled avalanche, when he goes like. <laughs> when you, you, know, like you know, the one that you need to aim while being stationary? That was free bad. Uh, yeah, uh, and swipe, is the, swipe while on wherever is a bit odd, right? Like, especially with a lot of attack speed, they glitch out quite a bit. Uh, but, uh, yeah. I think There's, it's more uh, like the wall kings. It, more than the attacks, the attacks is actually... It's more like the wall kings and stuff, right? Like, when they walk, it's just very stiff. So you... Uh, 
it's weird because like whenever I think of like a character that has bad animation with walking, I always go to the acolyte because the stutter step every time you come to a stop is just the most annoying thing ever. But uh, I'm definitely excited to see the primalists get some new, just to look better, to move better. Um, I'm assuming the animations, you know, refer to all skills and to you know your movement skills as well, such mm -hmm. as you know just just yeah. clicking around and moving. Um, but yeah, I I don't know. I the the one skill that's always impressed me is like entangling roots. Like I love the fact that he you know goes down to one knee and puts his hands on the ground and the fucking roots come out. Like I think that's yeah. a really sweet animation. So I really hope that like, you know you kind you of feel yeah. yeah that you can feel those in that area because it it does say that all of them have been removed or replaced. So I'm really hoping yeah. that that still has that kind of thing. Um, you can't cast entangling roots super super fast so you can't like take a knee and like yeah you can't get super ridiculous with it so i'm hoping that they keep you know a lot of lists I, yeah well yeah we'll, we'll see I'm, I'm kind of excited to see how much better you know I, like as i said earlier primalist is one of my favorite classes if not the favorite that i try to play with so i'm excited for that even if it didn't you know, get a whole lot of skill reworks um, mm -hmm. or, or skill changes. I really hope uh, Shaman gets a bit some love. I feel like Shaman is the one, to be honest, I think Beastmaster, sure, is, I think the problems of Beastmaster are not so much Beastmaster, but just like pets in general. That they're just not really strong and they're not really great ways to build around them or whatever, so it feels a bit. If you compare it to the stuff, the other stuff in the game, it just feels. But I think its tree is actually pretty good. Shark, all the aspects on the Beastmaster, Shark, uh, uh, the Viper or Boar, all of those aspects are really good. I think the top of the tree is good. Like some of the companion passives are pretty good. The the glancing blow, the dodge, like I think I think the actual passives of the character are pretty good. And but for example, one problem that I see with Primalis is like like what 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 abilities does Shaman have? Like Avalanche and Avalanche, right? And then all the totems which are just support, right? So. Uh, and it's a shame, honestly. I think I, I think he needs his. We need Wind Druid, you know, from Diablo 2. Spinny, spinny, fucking hurricanes around you, like a snow blizzard storm around you, like you know, like he needs some proper like spells, AOE stuff, and that big dick stuff. In my opinion. Well, I think that's the problem. Is a lot of their their skills are like utility skills. So you have Maelstrom. Which isn't really a super damaging skill. It's and no. it, it you know it's a yeah, dot, it's a but then it has skill, but... yeah, but it's it's just filled with buffs. Like you have you know dodge and stun yeah. chance and... and and it's not even, it's not even shaman right because you can use it on anyone like like you can just why even be a shaman like yeah. even avalanche you can use avalanche on anyone really still like well I mean you're a shaman so that you can have storm totem. Come on now, <laughs> storm. I I still you hope. Can use the, you, you can use the boardman set. Eh? 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 Uh, it, yeah, that, I'm hoping that gets. Uh, it, it has some okay. problems. Well, it's it's not that it needs more love. It's just, have you have you used it? Like actually played around with it? It's. I actually only I haven't actually found your chest yet. You need to gamble that, but the well, the I, way it works. I don't play Primalist, so they don't appear in the show. <laughs> the the way I had it planned to work was you would get I'm as much, yeah. you would get as much cast speed for Storm Totem as possible, and then you would have it just sit there and fucking zap the shit out of you. Yeah. You'd get some ward, you'd get your defense like that way, and then you'd be able to have more damage because you get a damage per stack that you got hit up to like a cap of three, and then you could do your skills. So like Storm Totem was more like to boost you, it was to empower you yeah, yeah. on top of anyways. But the problem is it doesn't target you. It targets enemies, and if you happen to be around the enemy and the enemy gets hit, then you get oh, hit. I and see. so it doesn't like if you just have Storm Totem next to you and there's no enemies, you you're not getting hit or zap. And maybe, so like maybe you need that juicy note in Storm Totem that now it targets pl also players, you know. Yeah. Storm Totem. Yeah, so I hope I hope it gets a little love in that direction because it was really annoying whenever you try to like get your damage, it would just fall off, you'd get no ward, nothing, and then enemies would come and then it was targeting them and you'd have to get in melee range to do it. And I was like, well, I'm not pushing this up the the arena because yeah. that's not gonna happen. <laughs> You're trying to stay ranged with like avalanche and ice thorns, and here you are having to to get in the fight. Yeah. But all right, level design. So we got Edoras Temple, which was uh, do you you like Edoras Temple? You think it's it's good? You like yeah, the new layout? Graphically, I, I really enjoy it. I love the I voice. 
Yeah, I, I, I like it. I like the voice that you're mentioning because I think a lot of people skip the text, right? For when they're playing, they just playing new RPG. I'm not going to reach it. Boom, boom, boom. Next, you know, and I think having stuff that uh, the voices and the little things that appear there that, you know, for those who are skipping the story, it's good that they're at least they get a sense of uh, I would like to see more of that in the game in general, just for those who at the beginning, they just want to kill some monsters. They don't want to invest time into learning about the world. And, it, and I think the world of the Terra and the lore has a lot of potential. And I understand that a lot of RPG fans don't give a shit about that, right? But, uh, I mean, the more tools the game has to attract players, to make the experience not just like a good hack and slash, but also like a nice world that people want to love and people want to stay and people want to feel part of. Because I think all games that are important and games that are successful, I mean, they have great worlds, right? For example, like, if you think about Warcraft or uh, Starcraft, uh, uh, fucking, I don't know, any game you can think of, Diablo even, Diablo 2, like, you can you can enjoy Diablo 2 without reading the story, without talking to a single NPC, you can play Diablo 2, no worries, right? But if you chose to do that, you will fell in love with these characters and with Deckard Cain and his boys and Diablo, and you remember the bosses, and that, that that's what a lot of us haven't forget that game 10, 20 years later, right? And it's not that the story makes the game great, but it's uh, the story is what makes the game memorable, right? And uh, I would really love to see Last Epoch, uh, well, achieve that status. It's not just like a nice gameplay, but also like a, a franchise that can build like a cult, almost like a like a fan base and a and a proper, uh, you know, I don't, I don't want to be, I want to, I want people to recognize, oh, Terra, yeah, cool, so, you know, like, uh, hopefully in the future. I think it has potential. It's really cool. So going back to the map, <laughs> I like it, uh, but um, uh, I mean, I know the layout now. I like that there's like this little bit where there's like an ambush. And you know, there's like a wall of things that spit things at you and you have to destroy the wall to keep going. I think that's kind of cool. It looks really good. The bridges are kind of cool. The enemies are cool. The density is good. It lacks a bit to me sometimes when you pull too much enemies. Uh, but yeah, I don't know. What do you think about the area? I, I love it. I I love that its graphics are finally getting to the point where like you're you're amazed. By them yeah. you look at it you go wow compared to the area i just came from like holy shit this is really good yeah. um the mob density is well well up there like i've i've yeah. come to the conclusion that if you don't have an aoe skill before going in there you're kind of get overwhelmed especially like that yeah. early in the game um, yeah like I, I went in there with just a vengeance build and like you're not going to die or anything but having to attack them all like one at a time was like oh my god i need some aoe now um yeah. so you like switched to ride to give it a shot which is cool of course. um and do you know which areas or chapters th like so i know this is one thing i think they were going to work on is like letting you know when chapters begin and end so of they course. say they're gonna uh, of course i'm a, I'm a lore expert <laughs> Uh, yeah, chapter three, the one after chapter two. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so, so ch chapter three, I, I think chapter three is, I, I'm probably way off on this, but I think it's from the, as soon as you get to the end of time and, and go through the outfall outcast, chapter three is in yes. that area. And then chapter, chapter, th chapter three is when you, uh, when you open the portal of, uh, you know, that lets you keep moving from uh, the enchantment camp. Like the the loud, how is it called? When you open the yeah, because the first act is the the intro for you when you start at the beginning. The second act, or well, is uh, council chambers, right? And you know, fi fighting the the elder Panion and all that, right? The third act is like getting to the terrace temple, right? Uh, ruin temple, right? Uh, f uh, fourth act is uh, the emperor stuff, right? I think. Maybe I, I've never paid that close attention. To, like I've never seen like this is chapter, chapter three. Chapter <laughs> five is chapter five is Majeka. That's chapter five. so the desert area. Yeah, I think yes. So we should definitely like what I'm excited for is I'm obviously going to run. Is source, yeah, yeah. Chapter six is source. Chapter seven is the fire. Chapter eight is the. The Wangaris. So yeah. 
all of Heoboria. Yeah, I'm, I'm super excited. I'm going to be starting a new character. Definitely going to at least go through once just to see all the new areas, all the new maps, obviously. Um, I, I just don't know if I'm going to do... I don't know if I'm going to do that first or if I'm... I think the first thing I'm going to do is go jump on Warcry and just see what it is. Then I'll probably yeah. jump to Surge. And then, obviously, you're just going to have to go through every character and see what exactly changed on all the skills. Well, um, the, the, the first thing I'm probably going to do myself is... I'm probably going to try to beat these new bosses, you know, in Monolith. I'm killing <laughs> all the bosses, baby. <laughs> is there uh, anything else that you wanted to talk about that we that's not even part of 8.1? Is there... Um, well, there's... Uh, one thing we didn't talk about actually was um, the ladder and how it's been gone. But one thing I, I'm curious with these fresh updates to the Monolith of Fate, they have talked before about adding a ladder to the Monolith of Fate system. Uh, what would you like to see with that? Because you know we're we're competitive. We we like to uh, obviously compete. Competing is going to bring in more players because you know everyone's got a little bit of competitiveness in them. Even if they don't like arena, some people just did it just to get their name up on something where they could be seen. Yeah. You know, fame and glory is is what it's about in gaming. Um, what would you like to see? Yeah, yeah. We <laughs> I know it is for you. But what would you like to see in the model? Would you like to see an arena, um, a, a ladder for both? Or would you like to see it switched over to like the model system for streaks, for, you know, total runs? I think, I think uh, for um, when, the, when the game launches, I think people are, even if it's not in the game, there's definitely going to be races, right? Uh, who kills like, and a dragon first, stuff like that. Whoever the last boss of the monolith is when the game is released. And I'm not a racer myself, but uh, for those who like it, I mean, I think it's it would be pretty poke, right? Like if you are the first one to ever kill, like on the patch, like the emperor, like you, there's gonna be a ladder with first kills, right? On I think though, I mean, people like races, people like watching them. Again, I'm not like a big fan of that. I prefer the marathon and not so much like sprint. Um. But I think that would be cool. And then obviously, if we're talking about the marathon, what's the highest echo count you've done? As simple as that, you know? What's what's the biggest chain? But again, they if they want to do that, they also got to make a system that supports chaining. Uh, um, obviously, right now, you know, the ladder with... Uh, it's a, a bit all over the place now with how, like, you know, uh, current situation. So I lost a bit of interest in with that, right? Because it's really hard to know uh, if what you're doing is uh, where the bar really is right now. Because, I mean, I can assume that half of the ladder is cheated, but uh, maybe, I don't know, maybe there's someone in there that I think is a cheater and it's like, just like the next Michael, ja Michael Jordan, you know? Uh, so I want multiplayer, or at least, even if it's not like to play between us, just to play on the server to because I think I think the ladder can be really well used in order to balance and to you know because right now if you open the ladder and you see there's there's a void knight in two thousand waves, well obviously it is not right. So uh, I think it gives an impression of classes and power that is not real. So uh, yeah. Yeah, hopefully, I'm. Yeah, I don't know. Ho 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 hopefully they find a way so at least the ladder is not compromised somehow. Or yeah, I'm not the obvious stuff. You know, because you know if people. It is what it is, but I don't know. I'm hoping that they, uh, at least by like 1.0, I'm hoping for a, and you know I came from Lineage 2, and they they have something like this, a, a Coliseum of stats. Um, this is this is like a, a whole window, you pop it open just like you would the ladder, but it's more of like a full screen, you have, you have multiple pages. Yeah, and you can go through just about, you can find just about anything on any player is pretty much how it works but you have all your like top 100s and then you can type your name see where you rank in all these categories and you have you have everything you have everything from how much gold that you've earned yeah. you to like you would be able to spot like cheaters yeah you'd be you'd be able to spot you know the people that you think are botting or cheating like you yeah. know there's there's that, that the devs can use but you would be able to see stats on people you'd be like holy crap this person has has farmed you know, 50 million gold in a week. What the hell? You know, you'd be able to see how many echoes total they've done, how much on like each thing. Um, what I don't want to see is uh, in Diablo 3, they I have it. Based. Oh, yeah. Based, and then, uh, they, and you'd have that, you know, fastest boss kills, how fast to get to the bosses, how much time mm -hmm. has been spent on that character or whatnot, you know, which characters. Yeah. But, um, 
one thing that I hope that they don't do is in Diablo 3, you can see a person's full profile. But it's not just their stats. You can see their gear and what they ruled, and there's no hiding any sort of secrets. And by secrets, I mean, um, say you come yeah, up with a build, or items or whatever, yeah, and say say you're working on it. Um, and this happened to a lot of like popular creators for Diablo 3 is people knew who's working on what so they would follow them and click on their characters and see exactly what it is before they even posted a video and some yeah. people would steal like content that way um, so I'm kind of hoping they kind of keep that kind of like I like the way they have the ladder online they can see what skills you used I'd like those skills to be snapshotted though so that they yeah. don't change as soon as that character has yeah, moved yeah, on to something else um, but kind of stay away from the gear or, or anything else I, on I there think, I think they mentioned I think I've spoke with Fo about it and uh, I don't know if this is official or not but I think that they the the, the 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 idea would be a system where you can have your profile open or private so if you want to have your stuff up there you can do it imagine you're a streamer you're not making any guides and you just you know you're tired of people asking you oh what's your gear just click on my fucking you profile. Know, uh, profile and just check it and obviously for those who are like really highly competitive and obviously if you're going for a rank one boss kill and there's ten thousand dollars on the line oh i want to see people what you're doing right like uh you probably wanna it's the same way like for example you know on, on i come from mobas right and uh, you know, there was this like uh, thing that happened uh, on Smite when I played, like this is years, years ago, eight years ago. And you could do this, you could inspect people's profiles and it would show all your games, including the custom gates, which were the scrims between teams. And there was someone who spent like time going over everyone's profiles, checking what they were practicing, you know, on, on those like private games. And they could see like all the picks and all the builds and all that. And yeah, they got, they, they fixed it basically by just making, uh, this like option that you can just make your profile hidden and that's it. It solves yeah. everything. Yeah, so, yeah, it'll be interesting. I'm super pumped for this patch. I know you are. Yeah. Um, who who isn't pumped for you know some new content coming in? Yeah, uh, I really wish they gave us a. Uh, if you depths, if you're hearing this, we like we like the release dates. I I love dates. We're like two hours in. Exactly. They're not listening at this point. <laughs> hey, <laughs> we are important people. They should. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, we, we we do love release dates. I think that that's probably something I don't I don't see them doing that till like at least multiplayer comes online and they have servers or maybe even 1.0. But well, I think I think that they will. Yeah, I think they will release dates for really big things. So like the rogue was a big thing. Multiplayer will be a big thing. Maybe end game systems will be big enough if they do like a whole new system. Maybe that'll be in there. Other than that, I really don't see it until like 1.0 when they have seasons and they, that you have to kind of do those things um also i saw um i think it was in discord do you see how many members they have now in on the ehg team i think they it's said they're 50. up yeah they're up to 50 members which is much higher than the 35 that i remember it being just uh, like six months ago like shortly before yep, yep. um summer so definitely still growing so that, that's pretty exciting still not calling me I don't think they call any of us. I, I don't get yeah. called. I'm I'm being I'm actually being pushed out. <laughs> Oops. But uh, yeah. Um. Yeah. Anything else you want to say to the viewers? No, this is the um, end of the video. Thanks for having me. Uh, you know. Uh, again, I'm very excited. I I've been kind of like saving myself for the patch, so I'm expecting to go really hard when it drops. And again, I really hope. Uh, that you know 11 hour games is you know uh, loyal to themselves and they keeping some of the spicy stuff for the actual patch day and uh well i, I really hope they impress me with the monolith with the new defense and all that i'm hopefully i'm being optimistic here and hopefully they remove stunts from the game yeah that's uh st yeah that's all i'm gonna say yeah and what more is Thanks there to say that's that's what we can hope for um yeah it was fun having you and uh yeah have a good one